Right now, the day's biggest news stories from the biggest perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, what's up, Las Vegas? It is Thursday. So glad you could join us this Corona Thursday. And I'm not talking about beer. Welcome to the show. It is Sharp and Shapiro. A lot to get to. Certainly yesterday, it felt like this nation was in a movie. It was bizarre, crazy. You know, we were on the air yesterday. We talked a little bit about the coronavirus. But things just exploded. I'll get to it piece by piece. Coming up here at the bottom of the hour, we're going to be speaking to a doctor. Her name is Sherry Fink. She wrote an article in the New York Times, the government's response to the outbreak. Not so good. We'll talk to her coming up here in just a little bit. And then in hour number two, you know, we hear all these people talk about Joe Biden. Is he senile? Well, John Gartner is a psychologist, and he wants to talk a little bit about Trump's mental health. We'll get to that coming up in hour number two. Of course, it's Thursday. That means it's time for Dirty Dining with Darcy Spears from 13 Action News. And believe it or not, this week we're going to be talking a lot about lack of washing your hands. We're hearing that a lot especially in the last few weeks when it comes to the coronavirus. Mike Babcock from TMC Sports will also be joining us. And, of course, it will be hate mail time towards the end of the show. But, you know, yesterday we got off the air. I took my uh, power nap, and then I wake up, and all of a sudden I see the breaking news. And the breaking news is that Utah Jazz Rudy Gobert Tested positive for coronavirus. In the days leading up to it, starting on Tuesday, he wasn't feeling good. He had flu-like symptoms. They gave him a test, which is amazing because from what I can understand, nobody's being tested in this country. We'll get to that. It's just absurd. But Rudy Gobert did a press conference on Monday uh, talking to the media and actually mocked the coronavirus. Let me explain. He's talking to the media. He said the coronavirus wasn't a big deal. And then he, on purpose, took his hands, touched all the microphones, members of the media. In a way, that is exactly what it is. It's mocking what has taken place here. People have died because of this virus. And now we learn that he has the coronavirus. And the amazing thing about this is the Utah Jazz organization, they had a game with the Oklahoma City Thunder. They learned literally moments before this game was supposed to start. So I want you to listen to the PA announcer Moments before the game was supposed to start between the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Here it is. It says the game tonight has been postponed. You are all safe. And take your time in leaving the arena tonight and do so in an orderly fashion. Thank you for coming out tonight. We are all safe. (laughs) We are all safe. So... That's a, that's a weird situation. You don't normally see an NBA game canceled like that. And then, moments after that, the NBA comes out with an announcement that says they are suspending the NBA season because of one player, Rudy Gobert, getting the coronavirus, which, by the way, I agree with. It's probably a smart decision. And it almost felt like the stacked were one on top of the other after that happened. Then we learn that celebrities... Tom Hanks and his wife in Australia filming a movie about Elvis Presley. He announced he had the coronavirus along with his wife. Then the NCAA puts out a statement that says the NCAA tournament, and this is unprecedented. Like I said, it's like we're in a movie. The NCAA tournament will not allow fans to watch the games. But this is a part of this whole situation that makes absolutely no sense to me. And that is this. Either go all or nothing. Okay, the NBA is not having games. Why would the NCAA tournament even have games and put these amateur athletes at risk? Right now, as we speak, they're getting ready for the for the WAC tournament at the Orleans. Those games are still happening. The Pac-12 tournament announced yesterday, right before their last game, that no fans would be allowed to enter the arena today. But they're allowing members of the media, they're allowing important team members, they're allowing employees. And they're allowing family members. Now, in my personal opinion, it makes absolutely no sense to have this game at all. Either go all or nothing. What good does it do to not allow fans there 
This is the biggest problem that I have with this whole situation. Here's the deal with the NCAA. They're getting $770 million in TV revenue from March Madness. And they simply cannot afford to lose that revenue. And so they're going to, whatever they can do to prevent having to cancel the tournament, they will. Now the Big Ten has canceled their tournament. The SEC has canceled their tournament. I believe the Big East has canceled their conference tournament. So those three conference tournaments are canceled. Okay, but, but in my opinion, you have to test all the players, all the personnel. But and they're all, not going to be able to. I understand. That's that's but that's what you have to absolutely do if you want to play these games. Well, and they're the, not and, testing and, and, anybody. And the problem with that is, say for like for example, now Donovan Mitchell also has been declared positive for COVID nineteen. I did not know that. Was that this morning? That was this morning. So so you have two all stars. Wow, Rudy Gobert. And Donovan Mitchell both have it. but So the issue is now you have to test these players almost every day, not just these two, but their teammates and who they've been in touch with over the next couple of weeks. And that's what it's going to have to be like with everybody in the United States but JD, to confirm that they don't still have the virus or, or that, that they haven't somehow gotten the virus Yes, or that they are losing the virus and they, that they were passed, you know, that, that, this that country, previously infected. This country was not prepared for something like this. And the reason why I say that. Well, no country was, Brian. Um well, I'm going to start with this country. Then we could talk about the world. Okay, if you go into a quick care right now in Las Vegas, most most of the country, by the way, you go into a quick care or or the ER, or you even see your doctor, and you have symptoms of the coronavirus. In in all aspects, most likely they're not going to be able to test you for the coronavirus. Okay, that is effing ridiculous. There is no excuse for that. And then Donald Trump in the last few weeks, has been downplaying the coronavirus. He has, him and his administration. And now all of a sudden, people in Europe, you know, aren't allowed to fly into this country. Well, why didn't this happen a few weeks ago? It's too late now. And we're going to talk to Dr. Sherry Fink, who wrote an article about the government's response to the outbreak coming up here at the bottom of the hour. This is insane. Why is it that we don't have the ability in this country wealthiest country in the world we're not able to protect and take care of our citizens and for the most part not able to test people for the coronavirus there is no excuse for that well i'll tell you this brian the the brazilian government spokesperson who met with donald donald trump president trump has the coronavirus has just tested positive for the coronavirus so donald trump is going to have to get a test at this point well uh, absolutely but again it brings me back to my question why on earth do we not have the ability to test people for this virus? Makes no sense to me at all. We were not ready for this. Now, yes, I understand that the average age of someone that is dying from the coronavirus is around 80 years old. I understand that. But this is not something to play with. And think of all the people now that are going to be impacted by this. I don't understand the NCAA. I really don't. Why are you even having these games? It's either all or nothing. Stop it with, well, we're not going to let fans in, but we'll let family members, we'll let employees. What the hell is the difference? Don't have the games. Why even have these games now? You're putting these amateur athletes at risk. It makes zero sense. And then we had a, a situation yesterday where now an NBA official, a female NBA official, they believe has the virus. It doesn't make any sense. It's all or nothing here. When the NBA, and we're talking about a lot of money being lost here, when the NBA says that's it, we're suspending the season, you know something serious is going on. Why the hell is the NHL still having games? Why is the NCAA tournament still on? Why do we have games at the Orleans Arena today? Why do we have games at the T-Mobile Arena today? It's either all or nothing. It, could the NBA be overreacting? Yeah, they could be. But now you've got a couple players on the Utah Jazz that, have, that are positive for this virus. So I don't think this is an overreaction anymore. I'm telling you, we're going to talk about Trump's response coming up at the bottom of the hour. It is unbelievable how they missed the mark on this. And if you watch Fox News, you'll think he's doing a wonderful job. What a great response by the government. What a great response by the Trump administration. Couldn't be further from the truth. Why now? Would you finally own up and say, well, you know what? We're not going to let people from Europe fly in here. The damage has already been done. 
The last two weeks, there was no travel ban. Why? They knew how serious this was a few weeks ago, but they downplayed it. They thought it was just going to go away. Well, guess what? This is serious now. And don't you give me this crap. Oh, you know, you'll be fine if you get the coronavirus. You know, it'll be gone in two weeks. There are people that are dying from this. And don't you say, well, look, the flu is is 50 times worse. When is the NBA canceled a season or suspended a season over the flu. It's never happened. There's a reason for that. People are scared about this virus because there's no cure for it. And if you have any other health issues, you're in big trouble. It was Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, that did a press conference yesterday. And I, I really like Mark Cuban a lot. He's, he's well-respected, extremely intelligent man. And he said, look, this isn't an issue about basketball games. He said, look, this isn't an issue about When are we going to get back on the court? This is a human issue. This is a world issue. I care about my mother. I'm worried about my mother. She's 82 years old. I care about my kids. And yes, the one thing that Donald Trump said yesterday in his, you know, teleprompter speech, the one thing he said that I agreed with was, yes, this is a time where we all should come together. That doesn't mean people shouldn't be criticized for their lack of a response. He did but say yes, people should come together. We should leave partisanship aside. Well, we'll and, see if and we should unite as a country. Well, that, that was very presidential of him. That being said, it's what, not presidential. What, what, how is he's, that? Not, he's reading a teleprompter. How, how, how is that not presidential? Reading a teleprompter, suggesting suggesting after what's happened between the Democratic and Republican you. Party, the liberal and the and the conservative media, Let me the right wing and left wing media that that we should all come together and fight this together. How is that not okay. presidential? Let me answer Biden? your question. I understand you don't like Donald Trump. Let me answer your question. Reading a teleprompter that somebody else, a speech that somebody else wrote from anybody can do. A serial killer could do that. What I want to see from Trump is heartfelt words off the cuff, not attacking the media, which by the way, he did do yesterday when Jim Acosta asked him, you know, some people feel like you're not taking this seriously. His response, instead of saying, I am taking it seriously, Jim, And we want to help all Americans. His response was, you're fake news. You're CNN. You're fake news. What I want to see is I want to see Donald Trump, without a teleprompter, speak from the heart. I want to see Donald Trump speak like a decent human being. Then I will say he's acting presidential. He read a speech off of a teleprompter yesterday. The the WAC just canceled their conference tournament. They did? Yep. Wow. Look at that. Yep. That is incredible. I would imagine the Pac-12 is going to do the exact same thing. I didn't get that email yet, but... Uh, yep, yep, Pac-12's canceled, too. I just got an email from the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. So there's no college basketball conference tournament across the country right now. Wow, that is unbelievable. And the incredible thing about that is all the teams are here. You know, they're in town. The Pac-12 had, had games yesterday. What do you make of that? Honestly, I think you need to test everybody at this point. That is possibly going to participate in any type of athletic activity, whether it's at the professional or the collegiate level. And I don't know that we have the test. I, from what I understand, the, the city of Las Vegas had about 800 tests collectively as of a couple of days ago, and the expectation was that Las, Las Vegas would have 20,000 tests by the end of the week. Uh, I would not be shocked at all if, and it, just, it really depends on how fast the virus replicates. It actually The replication wasn't crazy yesterday. There was only 74 cases across the country. And the the conversation had been that the the virus would replicate 100 percent every two days, and I I just don't see that happening. But if it the next seven to 14 days are totally indicative and are so important as to what's going to happen over the next not not just two months, not just six months, but but the year for the mar- the market, the economy, and the population of the United States and the world. So we'll we'll see we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks with the coronavirus and how fast it replicates itself. Uh, the statement, by the way, from the WAC, uh, the Western Athletic Conference has announced the cancellation of the uh, WAC basketball tournament presented by Ticketmaster. The decision has been made by the WAC Board of Directors based upon new information. I don't know what that new information is. The Pac-12, also CBS, is reporting the ACC and the Pac-12, as you mentioned, is canceled, as well as the MAC. You mean to tell me that they're going to have an NCAA tournament? I'm sorry, J.D., I don't see it happening. How could they have a, a, an NCAA tournament now? How? Well, you know, it might be May Madness instead of March Madness. Well, that's – I don't think they would do that. You don't think so? I know. I think it's going to be canceled. Yeah. you think So you think the NBA season and the NCAA season will both be canceled? Well, listen, the NBA is different. 
These are professionals. I agree. Three months down the road, they can continue the season and have a shortened season. The NCAA tournament's not going to do that. I, in my estimation, I'm telling you, the NCAA tournament, it's not going to happen. So you think that there's not going to be a 2020 NCAA basketball champion? Uh, that's what I'm telling you. I'm no, telling you. No, uh, nobody's cutting down the nets. Listen, no, folks. No madness. Not in March. Not in yeah. April. Not in May. Guys, this sucks. And let me tell you why. This First of all, I'm a huge basketball fan, and I'm saying it selfishly. I love these tournaments here in Las Vegas. I love the NCAA tournament. It's my favorite time of the year. Uh, this sucks if you're a sports fan, but they're doing the right thing. I really believe they're doing the right thing here. Uh, from a selfish standpoint, I'm pissed off about it. I was looking forward to seeing Dan Marley in Grand Canyon in the uh, in the WAC today. I was actually going to go to the Pac-12 today as well. I didn't get a chance to go yesterday because of everything that was going on. So this is a uh, this is shocking. It it almost seems surreal. It feels like we're in a movie. And I know a lot of other people have said the same thing. This is a really bizarre situation. We've never seen anything like this before. I would say it's definitely the craziest time in sports yeah. history that I can remember. No question. We'll Has take, to be. Let's take a few phone calls on this. 702-257-5396. I'm almost at a loss for words. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I believe now that the NCAA tournament will not happen. All these how and by the way, how could you have the NCAA tournament when you're not crowning a champion in your own conference? How could the selection committee even pick teams? That would be so unfair. They, they can't have the NCAA tournament. It's not going to happen. 702-257-5396. Let's talk to Johnny. Johnny, you are first up on the Vegas Take. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Johnny? Outstanding program. Thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot. Hey, a couple things right and left to talk about real quick. Uh, I live in Boulder City, and uh, the Albertsons is sold out of toilet paper, which is just <laughs> cracking me up. Oh, my I goodness. Mean, it is bizarre. It is. It, it reminds me of the zombie apocalypse beginning. <laughs> now, hey. also, guys, I'm a sports better, and uh, I believe that uh, the Golden Knights are going to shut down <clears throat> in the NHL as well. It's just a matter. How of could the they not, Johnny? Well, th- 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 here's the issue it with that. The, Dude, the, somebody's going to come up with it. Not only that, but the NBA and the NHL. A lot of these teams they share arenas. The- Believe me, they're having meetings, all of them. Yeah. Every sport right now, they're having meetings on it. If, Rudy, if no, I personally believe if nobody in the NBA had tested positive for the coronavirus, this wouldn't be happening. I agree. I, yeah, I think Rudy Gobert started this whole thing. And, I'm, and listen, I'm not blaming the guy. I'm just saying. Well, you know, we, you know, we don't, we, but we don't know if Donovan Mitchell didn't give it to go to Gobert. We, we, we have no idea hey, as far hey, as the hey, transmission pattern. How would, how would you like it, uh, Johnny, if you were guarding Rudy Gobert the la- at some point in the last week and he was breathing all over you? I'd be it's freaking crazy. out. I know his spit's getting all over me and everything. It's it's terrible. Yeah. Well, let's say I mean, he actually got into a fight with o- with o- yeah. He actually got into a fight with OG and Nunnaby from the yeah. Toronto Raptors yeah, a couple yeah. of days. They're ago. all being tested. Everybody's being tested. Johnny, they I have think, to be. Johnny, hey, I th- Johnny, I think you no, make a, a good We're point. Have, Biden's going to get in because of this. This bug is going to take down Trump. You wait and see. It's, it's possible. It it's possible. Uh, very possible. Johnny, we appreciate the phone yeah, call. Yeah, call, Johnny. Thank you very I much. I certainly hope that does not happen to the president. Yeah. Let's go to Lewis. Lewis, you're next on the Vegas Take. What's going on? What's up, Lewis? Hey, guys. Um, look, it is. this is serious, obviously. Um, you know, the NBA players having it. The players aren't at risk. They're based on everything that we know as far as age and health, the NBA players are not at risk. The fans are, because there are some elderly people with health conditions in the stands. I get it. But here's something it's that's scary, the Lewis. It's, it's the scouts. It's their families. It's, it could be I, their, it could be their people, relatives. But, but, Lewis, here's the scary part, okay? There are people in their 20s and 30s that have died in China from this virus and in other countries. I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but there are a lot of unanswered questions about this virus, and I think that's what makes it scary. We don't have definitive answers. I'll tell you this, Brian. There's, there's only like thing. 10. Okay, here's a, th- this thing has been politicized. So if we're going to talk about it, the politicized part of it, and this is just my opinion, and I'm not afraid. I, I'm not afraid based on everything that we know. I'll run through it, a hospital room, a hospital room full of people of, of coronavirus. I'm not afraid. It's been politicized. Democrats struck out with Russia, Mueller. Kavanaugh. See, I'm not going to go there, Lewis. This how is do you, how do you Lewis. crash the economy with consumer confidence? Lewis, the I'm not going to go there. Dem- with the Democrats. Uh, Lewis, Democrats didn't force the NBA to shut it down, okay? Democrats are not forcing uh, the NCAA tournament to but most likely shut Democrats down. Democrats are in bed with the media, and the media is creating uh, a hysteria. Everybody thinks this is going to turn into the walking dead. Okay, now, first of all, 
I don't speak for everybody else, but I never said it was going to turn to The Walking Dead. With that being said, you said it yourself, Lewis. You started this conversation by saying this is a serious situation. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say that this is a serious situation and then hey, it's Brian, created by the Democrats. That's absurd. I, I just read the most surprising tweet I've probably ever read. Dick Vitale. Come on, NCAA, Mark Emmert. Time is now to cancel the March Madness. Health, safety, number one. It's Dick, crazy. Dickie V. Yeah, it's crazy. Dickie V is saying that. No, a lot of people. He's I'll, the poster child for yeah, March a Madness. Lot of, a lot of analysts have been, uh, last night, were echoing exactly what Dick Vitale said, and they said they'd rather be on the side of caution. Uh, I think Emirate is a coward. Uh, I've said that about I mean, him that for years. Crazy. Well, he's a coward. Uh, I, I mean, just, just, I agree with Dick Vitale 100%. Let's take another quick phone call. Let's go to Brady. Brady, you're next up on the Vegas Take. What's up? Hey, what's up, Brady? Yeah, good morning, gentlemen. This this situation has gotten completely worse. I've been talking about this. The, the government is finally realizing that this is a bioterror vaccine that was formulated in a lab and got loose. So they're coming to the realization. They didn't want to at first admit it to the public. Of course there is no vaccine. You know, we are in, in a really bad situation because this is an aerosol virus, which means it suspends in the air and can remain up to like six days on certain surfaces. Up to four hours just in the air. Well, so it's very scary. When we're, it's, when we're canceling these basketball games and everything, yeah, I think we should start canceling the schools right now. I they well, got all Brady these kids in a classroom well, with Brady, two feet of each other. Brady, that's what they did in Seattle. I mean, a lot of these schools are are are, are closed down in Seattle. So you're not the only one that's thinking that. And I, and by the way, I agree with you. I can't believe I'm saying that because we usually don't agree. But I think it's only a matter of time, Brady, before the Clark County School District decides to close down their schools. Because we're, you know, Brady, I'm sure you would agree. We're in the we're in the unknown right now. We don't know what's going to happen. Well, I, I appreciate the I, call. I will tell you this: UNLV is old, is only digital, I believe. For yes. The next couple of months, University the Clark County School District is going to go there eventually. Yeah, I'm telling you, University of Iowa, where, where yeah. I've, I've got a pretty good grasp of, they're actually digital as well until yeah. April 3rd. So a lot of a lot of schools, a lot of academic institutions across the country are taking these type of measures already. All right, so we're going to take more of your calls in the 10 a.m. hour. I promise you that. But coming up next, we have Dr. Sherry Fink. She wrote an article in the New York Times on the government's response to this outbreak. You might be surprised of what you hear coming up next. She knows exactly what she's talking about, and it's not very positive. We'll take a quick break. We're coming up next. You're listening to The Vegas Take.